Yeah, perfect. Right, Aaron? <laughs> He's being cool. He is. He's watching the Olympics. <laughs> oh, oh, 9.30, right? Is it 9.30? 9.30 is the big race, yeah. I'm not going to watch it. Me neither. It's on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen it, just while I'm waiting for Jamie's, if you haven't seen it yet, go YouTube the final of the semifinal yesterday with the Canadian DeGrasse and uh, Usain Bolt as they, in slow motion as they cross the finish line. It's probably one of the coolest little, well, it's probably like half a second's worth, but they slow it down. It's, it's amazing. When you have time to watch it, it's very cool. Well, they're like smiling at each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Giving each other the eyes, like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here I we won't go. wreck it, but go watch it. And yeah. Usain looks humongous. Wow. DeGrasse is only like a buck 50. I yeah. know. And what's Usain, like 6'5", I think he is, or 6'6"? Six, six? I don't yeah. know, like nine feet? Yeah, he's a tall guy. Okay, I'm just going to see if I've got the slides real quick from Jamie, and then we'll get going. And if I don't get them in the next couple minutes, we'll just get started. So hold on. Hey guys. Oh, looks like Jamie can get on. Sorry, can you hear me, Mike? Yeah. Uh, it's like really choppy for me, so I'll let you go and I'll try to move the slides for you. Oh, cool. Like a ventriloquist, awesome. So just to go over last July, again, we've talked about how other teams can struggle in the summer. And again, our numbers are nuts. Um, I'll just go over it with Andrea, Rachel, Alethea, Jamie, and Kim. Why not? Emily, Cheryl, Jacqueline, Brandy, Catherine, and Carla. Again, for slow months, that's fantastic. And I apologize because there's so many amazing new people on this team. Can someone, as far as Alethea goes, is this her first month? Yeah? Wow. So, again, 24 in your first month is redonkulous. So, what's that? That is her first month, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So cool for that. And again, look at all the people. You have to, again, remember, for most teams in the U.S., SC5 is their benchmark. And everybody on that screen got it. And I'm going to break into something real quick. Just so you guys know. Oh, here, this is the, uh, this is, yeah, Success Club update. Perfect. So this is up until a few days ago. Um, again, it's so cool that Rachel's at the top there with 27, um, and she's doing the call. So that's like perfect timing. And then again, already look at how many people have hit five or 10 or above. So one of the things you see on the screen there, it says, say no more to SC4. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I mean, SC5 again is the benchmark and we have lots of time to get there. That being said, a lot of teams try and get there within the first week. They try and hit their five or their 10 within the first week. And I'm going to digress and explain something Jamie probably won't explain to you guys. Um, so I'm kind of glad we can't hear him. So when we or Jamie, I, I say we, but when Jamie is technically ranked as the number 10 coach, and I know you've heard this before in the company, that has zero to do with how well or how many challenge packs Jamie sells. That is 90% how well all of us do. And 
he without getting into all the math behind it because it's a little complicated our team basically gets two points and somebody hit by so because we have so many people who hit above as a team we are ranked as the number 10 team in the company so I don't know how else to say this but even though Jamie's name is attached to it that is our ranking as a team and I know a lot of you saw my post the last time when I told everybody you need to start acting like a top coach posting like a top coach and thinking like a top coach and I almost for me it's like sometimes it's like oh geez I wish I hadn't have said that because so many of you went out and made these amazing posts about being a top 10 team. You are a top 10 team. I tell my team, don't tag me on those. Do not tag me on those. I'd, I'd love to take your friends into my challenge. Well, I wouldn't, but when you tag me on those, and if somebody is a real business builder, they might do a little bit of research between myself I'll just use Rachel because she's on here and they might make a different decision. So you need to start a start thinking like that is your ranking because it is your ranking as a team, as part of crush it. You are on a number 10 team. That is your ranking. Even though Jeannie's name is attached to it and yes, he is responsible. I'm not trying to take anything away from him because he's, done the most amazing job with it, all of us as far as organization and pushing. That being said, for me, even though Jamie's name is attached to it, I want us to get to number seven or eight, which means when I see people hit SC4, it destroys me because sometimes it's the difference between 10 and 9 or 10 and 11 is only two points. And that's that difference between SC4 and SC5. And this is how it's going to benefit you. Come, I think it's December 26th, if we can get that ranking of 10 or above, we can say that for the entire next year. Every week, every second day, all of us on this call can say, my team is the number 10 team in this entire company, and I guarantee you that is gonna get you business filters. So for, for me, and I know Jamie won't say this, but when, when you see people hit SC4, it's like, oh, that, that could have got us to a higher level, and that's us. I, I still am saying it's us because I know even though Jamie's name is attached to it, when I say I'm a part of the fastest growing team in this company, our team is number 10. I don't then go and go check out Jamie's page, okay? It's our team and you guys need to start posting like that. So I might be beating a dead horse there, but that is what to me the say no more to SC4 means is there is so much power to being a part of a top 10 team. You're, if, you, if you use it properly, you'll be getting business builder after business builder by stating that. Okay, does that make sense to people? Sorry, Cheryl, I'm staring at, your, at you there. Did, did that make sense how I explained it? Yeah, okay. Can you hear so, me, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, just quickly, I'm, you're cutting in and out on me, so just give me the thumbs down if I chop out. But um, yeah, like Mike said, it, it's, I, I don't even know how you would measure the impact for the next, once December comes and whatever our ranking is, if it is, the, and I, I would even say top 10. You don't even have to say number 10. You're a top 10 team, and that can kind of constitute anywhere in there, really. Um, and, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the UK. Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe it's Australia. Maybe it's nothing. Who knows? But I don't know. If I'm looking for a team to join, boy, a top 10 team, team in Canada is pretty enticing for a business builder. And the other part of it, you know, I don't want you to feel like enormous pressure, but at the end of the day, you should kind of feel your own pressure to move your business forward. And it's almost like if you're at four, 
and you have a week left, man, I, just for my own, if I was at four, I'd do anything I could to just go to over that SC5 because that's, that's the benchmark of the business. And so if you're at four, for me, I would just up your game and do whatever I can, can to get over that benchmark, not even only for the ranking, which is huge for all of you, just for your own personal business to keep moving forward and growing. But that being said, you, we're crushing it, you guys. Like, be proud of what you're doing. It's pretty, pretty phenomenal. So I'll pass it back to you, Mike. Okay. Phenomenal. Okay. So what's the next slide there, Fitzy? Oh, gosh. That's a lot. Holy smokes. I mean... That's the same as smart ass now, right? Yeah, I felt, I almost felt, I know today, sorry, and I, today was crazy on, on smart ass and crush it, how crush it slash summit slash buff slash we dominated Miguel's board today, which was kind of cool. Um, again, it, that's super impressive. So, and where we're getting to that point where can I even name all the emeralds yet? So, um, Melanie, uh, Laura, oh, I can't see that one. Is it Madeline, uh, Aaron, Cian, Jen, Alethea, uh, Merck. I think it's, I think it's Mork, Merck. Just kidding, Mark. Um, and then Elaine and Sherry. So that's a ton of emeralds for, for a team. And it's funny. It's not that long ago when we started. That's the hilarious part. It's like just over a year. Hey, Mike, so, really quickly. Yeah. Mike, just, hey, guys, when you do these slides up, put, uh, try to put the person's name on there. Just so, just for like purposes like this. So we know who, who, because a lot of these people are brand new and they're just, it, get, it allows us to get to know them as well too, right? Just a little tip. Thanks. They are. They're just a little small. They're good. And the next slide, I know we have some diamonds. Yes. Okay, let me see if I can get this first name right. Shauna, congratulations. <laughs> Again, for Jamie and I, this is cool because we grew up with these people. Like, I, this is going to sound strange. I've known Shauna since 1980, and most of you weren't even born born then so that's the coolest part and then Elda also a diamond uh, grew up with Elda since 1980 um, and then Emily as well so congrats to you guys for going diamond that's honestly that's yeah when you go diamond I know I know those of you who've gone it like that is like the benchmark um, and once you hit that it's it's not that the stress is gone because then you have to keep it Uh, more difficult the pressure you put on you because then you set your goals even higher and without getting into it after you hit diamond the next plateau that you push for is to start diamond but for now let's, let's just calm down and make sure we go uh onto smart ass or onto their personal pages and let's make sure we all go and at least leave a comment okay so I'm going to give you my pet peeves because I'm the cranky old guy is when you see a post and it's 72 people have seen it and two people liked it, especially these people on our team. Just give it a like, give it, I know there's a lot, there's a lot going on. And if you missed it, that's cool. But just a little like or comment to support each other. Um, so yeah. So those of you who did that for everybody today, thank you. And congrats to you diamonds. That's awesome. Cool. Does that mean uh, Miss Boom Braga is up next? Is it my turn? Was that your first slide there? Uh, no. So I'm okay to share screen? Yeah, unless... Uh... Looks like everything's okay. Tell me if you can see my screen. I can see the whole screen, yes. Okay. Awesome. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to tell everyone right now, I'm totally right now. So all these like ocean pictures are, are from her. So, and I want to talk a little bit about her too, because, um, I really like her because she is real. 
She has no apologies for what she says. Um, I didn't know that she, um, so she used to be an alcoholic and she's sober and she talks about it a lot and she's very open, which I think is super key. So how are we going to run a kick-ass challenge group? So you got to get real. I don't know why my screen is. Woo. Okay. So you have to be authentic. And I, I call myself this all the time. I'm, I'm going to be mean coach Rachel. And I have to bust out mean coach Rachel sometimes um, just to get everyone on track in my group. So the first one is be you. Um, and I know for you new people that, uh, you know, running your first challenge group that you need those scripts as somewhat of a guideline, but it's really important um, that you change it up, put it into your words, how it would sound coming out of your mouth. Uh, for those of you who have been doing it for three, four, five months, um, it's going to get repetitive for your challengers. So, um, and I was guilty of that at first I was like five six rounds in I was still using the same scripts and I kind of asked my challengers what they wanted from me and I I totally changed it up so um, I think round nine was a game changer for me I've been doing it for a year now um, I never plan my posts um, it's I know it's easier because I'm at home full time um, and I but you got to make the time to check in on your challenge group during the day. So 30 minutes in the morning, if you're at work, do a quick check-in at lunch, and then 30 minutes in the evening. Um, just to see what the chatter is about in the group. Um, and also, the last point here is if you see someone doing something wrong, quote unquote wrong, call them out on it. You know, if they start complaining that they miss their workouts or their MIA from the group or they're clearly eating the wrong foods. When I first started, there was a girl in my challenge group, like when I was a challenger with my old coach, she was eating like deep fried bananas every day and my coach never said anything. So um, obviously use your discretion when you call these people out, um, you know, private message versus, you know, shouting it out loud in the group. Um, most of my challengers are okay with me, you know, calling them out in the group, but there are some people that you need to kind of in a private message um, and that's what I mean about being mean coach so there's times that I go on total live rants in my group um, about when, like when one person complains that they cheated it just starts to snowball and snowball and everyone says well I cheated too and I gotta you nip that in the bud and that's when you, you bring out mean coach um, and you tell everybody you know there's people in this group that depend on you so when everyone starts complaining it's just it's a you know your whole page is full of complaints and everyone kind of gets down um, so what do you post? So I go live every morning. Um, usually it's just to say, hello, how is everyone doing? Um, it's okay if you ramble for a little bit, that's fine. Um, going live shows spontaneity. It, it shows your challenge group that you wake up in the morning thinking about them. Um, they're just not a, a something to do on your to-do list and check it off and it's done. Like you wake up thinking about them. Um, and it was funny. I didn't go live one day last week in the morning and they all were like, where are you? Uh, um, and I found the videos. They asked me to do the videos because a lot of them are getting their kids ready from, for school. They're getting ready for work or they're driving to work. So if they can press play on that video and listen to me in the background, it's much more convenient for them. Um, also now that I'm going like more spontaneous and just kind of flying by the seat of my pants, like I literally wake up every morning, have no idea what I'm going to post, but I post about what that day's chatter is or the chatter from the day before. So, um, if someone starts bringing up, you know, I need to start planning my meals, uh, I need good crock pot recipes. So I just, I get that chatter going with what can we do for crock pots or if someone needs container clarification, I will make a whole new video clarifying all the containers. Um, if someone brings up that their family's not being supportive, I, we talk about the whole surrounding yourself with positive people. So just kind of feed off the group's chatter for the day. Um, another thing that I found that comes up often in the chatter are recipes. Like my group loves 
recipes. Um, there are people out there that cannot whip up something just looking in the fridge. They need a recipe book. They need guidelines, um, not just recipes, but I, I filmed myself unpacking my groceries and they have told me that it has been hands down one of the best posts because when they join me, they're like, well, what weird food do I have to buy? Um, and I tell them, you know, I don't go to Whole Foods. I, well, I do, but, you know, you can go to the superstore. You don't have to buy weird, wonky food. Like, we're just eating real food. Um, and another reason to post the recipes and, and stuff all the time is especially if you have, like, restrictive diets in your group, like vegetarians or vegans. So you always want to stay on top of the group and always provide resources. Um, and show your real life. So a day in the life. I, often, I go live in the morning, but I often go live again. I have had a woman message me. She's now my challenger. She said she went in a local Facebook group and searched 21 Day Fix. She said, I found a crap load of coaches, but I went with you because she kind of creeped out my page. And she's like, you know, you do your videos. Your kids are screaming in the background. You know, something goes like you're real. And you have to show people that this program works in every life. So when you show a day in the life of Rachel or Megan or Michelle, like they know that you're real, right? Especially um, when you're done your workouts, we all want to go to like Snapseed and, you know, drama that up or put the HDR filter on, but just take a gross sweaty selfie of yourself. Cause that's what your challengers want to see that you're just like them. And you're going through the same journey as them as well, right? So, um, but I do, I do go on live video again in the afternoon. I rant, once I ranted, because I saw this lady in the parking lot of the superstore, she was like head to toe, new lemon, perfect makeup, perfect hair, going to the gym, and I'm like, I don't have time for that crap. And I went on this huge rant about that. So, and they like it, they think I'm crazy. Um, so something else that we do in our challenge group is we celebrate and we're silly. So as you can see here, we love to sit on skill victories. You know, I have my friend in the middle there. She's one of my best friends, Lori. She fit in a child's camping chair. And, uh, and just this, the, the common thread between all of this is that when I first started, it was, it was I'm not going to say it was robotic, but it was very like planned and thought out during the day. And we're as now it's just real Rachel all the time. Sometimes I have a potty mouth, you know, sometimes I ramble, but that's okay. And, and we have fun with these funny things. And um, something else I brought up in my challenge group, um, other than these fun non-scale victories is we have um, a fun Friday. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen the videos by the fitness marshal. Um, he did uh, a dance to Megan Trainer's Me Too. And so I posted it in my group and I said, your homework is to watch this video, learn the dance, and then post yourself dancing in the video. We got husbands involved. We got kids involved. Um, so it was super fun. You got you to gotta make your group really lighthearted. And I know at first we have all the posts about if you were sitting on a bench, who would you sit with? And, and that does get the people, they get, it gets them open. But I found that I've had some challengers in my group for over a year now. Um, and, and the new people kind of feed off of the old people. And, and everyone just seems to come together really quick. I don't need to do as many of those posts to get chatter. Literally, my group is self-governed. I could not go in my group all day and they would be fine. Um, so another really, really important thing to do in your challenge group is to prime your challengers. So you have to set them up because these are where you're going to get your coaches. So do your coach for the day. If um, usually like my challengers will nominate each other, they'll say, Oh, so-and-so is amazing. Or so-and-so is amazing. If no one volunteers, Pick someone who you think will be awesome. Um, when I went to Nashville, I kind of left a couple people in charge and the entire group was self-governed. Like I didn't have to do it. They told me, go have fun. Guys, if there's a day you know you're going to be really busy, don't worry about your group. They know you're busy. They know that you're a mom. They know that you go to work and, and, and they'll understand. So you kind of nominate someone to be in charge. Um, and also leave it to the experts. So when someone asked the other day, Oh, you know, I'm really struggling with the crock pot recipes. Instead of me jumping in and answering it, 
I know I have someone in my group who's amazing at crock pot recipes and I tag them. So if I know somebody else has the answer, I will tag them so that they can answer the question. Um, and that's how you start to build, like you plant your little seeds and your nuggets and, and people start to be coach-like and have those coach qualities. Um, and this, this is the part where I'm gonna get real. I hope I don't cry here, because I cry in my group all the time. Um, the get raw, cry, cry, because um, it just shows that you're real. Be passionate, share your stories, go on your rants, share your struggles. Um, remind people of your own journey, because I constantly have people coming into my group and they don't, don't necessarily know where I came from. They don't know that I've lost 120 pounds. Um, they don't know that I've had twins and that I had, you know, a tummy tuck because I had so much excess skin and, and they want to know that I'm relatable, that I am real. So I remind them all the time of my journey and I cry all the time. I say it. Um, my kids are always in my videos. They're always in the background. I'm real. I don't pretend to put on this shiny, perfect life because it's not shiny and perfect. Um, but you have to be relatable. So how does this improve your business? So I haven't read an ad since April or a paid ad. And even then, like I haven't really done any paid ads since the last team cup in February. Um, and in February I hit SC 47 and then the last three months have been 37, 26 and 31. And the reason being is because my challengers know that my group is a safe place. It's a safe place for them to complain about their day. It's a safe place for them to um, put in their struggles, to put in their, their selfies that they would not put on their regular page, let alone show anybody else. Um, so I at, I at least get three referrals a month from my challengers because they know that they can invite their friends into this safe place. Um, and, that's, and that's it, three referrals a month, you've hit SC5, right? So if you can create a safe place for your challengers that they can say, you know what, I'm going to bring a friend in on this because I think it's so great and, and, and um, I think Rachel's a great coach. So, and also you become a better coach. So ever since I've gone spontaneous and I haven't really planned anything, um, I find that I'm quicker on my feet. I'm quicker on my feet answering their questions. I'm faster at answering their questions. And in turn, you become faster and quicker at answering questions for potential customers, right? If you're always on your feet, on your toes, right? Um, and by running really good challenge groups, you will get coaches, right? The best coaches come from your challenge groups. They know the process. They've understood the journey. They didn't get into it for like a get rich quick scheme. Um, you know, I started a year ago, uh, August, and I'd lost 10 pounds during my first round of 21 day fix. And I literally, I saw Mike walking with the kids. I'm like, I have 10 people. Should I send them to you? He's like, no, you do it. I was like, what? Right. And it's because I'd been active in the, in his, in angels, in his challenge groups. Um, I was really vocal. So that's what you got to do. You got to get them to be vocal and participate. And then when they start, when you start seeing that one person bringing in like a ton of people, that's so start bringing in people. You're really vocal in the group. Like it's just a no brain, right? And what improves your business is that you get to brag about an amazing group. Every time I sell a contract, I I have 130 women in this group, and by the way, when you talk to people, it's um, about selling a challenge track. Always do voice messages. It's been working like crazy for me. They can hear the passion in your voice, but I tell them, I have 130 women whom I love very deeply. We are a fit family, and I brag about them, and they want to be, it's that FOMO, fear of missing out, right? They need to be part of that. Um, so I actually got this quote from one of my challengers. So you need to help fuel that individual commitment from each of your challengers with your engagement in your uh, interactions in your teachings. So these are my ladies. I have to show some of them are on the call tonight. 
guys, there there are posts a day on my page, just like pictures going on and on and on and on all day. Um, my challenge groups have never been better. Um, I do have to say I did the point system a couple months ago, which went fabulously because I have some very competitive ladies in my group. Um, but it got a little out of hand and I couldn't keep track of it anymore. Like it was a bit nuts. Like there's literally 60 points. I moved over to, you know, keep posting, but I'm going to let the group vote on who they think should win at the end of the month. Um, but yeah, I, I saw questions popping up. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Hold on here. Your screen's a bit weird. So you can add a challenger's friend without them buying anything. I have done that before. Um, one of my longest challengers, she's been with me for a year, asked me, I have a friend. She's on mat leave. She doesn't have the money right now. Um, can you let her, I let her in to watch and it was literally two weeks. She's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm sold. I'm not a stickler about letting in people for free or, or the free rides, like kicking those people out. I literally move all 130 people from one round to the next round because eventually they will either buy into it or they'll refer a friend and it always wor works. Do you create a new group each month or simply I create a new group every month uh, only because I can't even count the amount of posts I have in each challenge group. So it is a, a pain in my rear taking everyone out um, and moving them forward. One thing I do suggest is, is when you delete everyone from your old group, keep that group open for a little bit. I learned the hard way in my first few months that I would move over everyone over and delete the old group. And then I'm like, oh, I lost all those like before and after pictures that I could use. And so always keep the group from the month before um, open. Do you give them a daily challenge in the morning video? Not necessarily. Um, I honestly, the live morning video, it's just an interactive chat I have with all of them. So usually I go online at like eight o'clock, five, six, seven people come online and we just kind of chat about the day. I answer their questions. You know, I'd say it's kind of like a zoom call like this, but not really because I can't see them, but we just, we talk to each other in the morning. Um, a lot of my challengers are, they have full-time jobs, so it's kind of hard to do a challenge every morning. But, you know, I do easy ones like take a Shakeology selfie with a mustache or, um, you know, I don't really do water tag anymore, but, like, I do the fitness martial video. I do it on a Friday, so they've kind of got all weekend to do it, which is fun stuff. Yes, Jax, you can go live in a group. Um... I remember hearing that you know the names of everyone's husband's kids, et cetera. Do you just do this through? Uh, uh, I'm going to say. <laughs> She's got a memory like I, it's crazy. I have crazy. a mind like a steel trap. It's horrible for me. It's, <laughs> it's that. Um, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to answer Katie's question first. How do you approach a challenger that are not active in your group? So uh, as you can imagine, out of 130 people, not everybody posts. Um, and every so often I... I check in on them and I think okay like no I'm good like just if I ever need anything I'll check in on you you know I make sure like you know you're getting your shake so like I have a disco coach who she's you know she messaged me every once in a while I know I'm not vocal but for those people that I haven't heard in a while I'll call them out and say hey especially if they used to post a lot the couple months before where'd you go what's going on and I mean it's August so they're all like I'm away or we're doing renos but um so that's what I, I kind of call them out or a personal message. I'm saying, is everything okay? What's going on? Um, and yes, I do know everybody's business in my group. <laughs> um, like, and, and, you, and you know what? If there's something going on in their personal lives, um, post it in the group. So one of my calendars, she's been with me forever, um, has been trying to adopt forever, and she became a mom today. So I posted it in the group so everybody could kind of celebrate around her, and that's how we get everyone to be uh, really close and friendly and get to know each other. They've all friended each other on Facebook. I see them posting on each other's wall all day. Uh, did you have a lot of challenger in your beginning months? Was it consistent? So my first month, I had 19 people, and I know that's not always normal, but I like – like I said, like I had lost, so with Beachbody, I've lost 75 pounds. So I literally had like 15 friends go like, what the hell are you doing? Um, and that's how I got so many people in my first group. And obviously I threw my mom in there and I couldn't throw John Paul in cause he was anti Facebook at the time. 
Um, but no, I did have 19 people. Um, and guys, don't worry, like every month, and Mike's told me this a million times, I freak out. How am I going to hit SC next month? Like, how am I going to get new people in the group? And it happens. It just happens. If you're consistent, you post three to five times a day on your personal page, business page, and in your challenge group, and it will happen. Um, the chatter in the group took a while. Like, it was really good at first. And like I said, it started to die out at like month five or six when the posts started to get a little stale. And then when I started flying by the seat of my pants, things really started to rev up a bit to the point where I, I can't even, um, I can't even uh, keep up anymore. Oh, Diana, your mom. Oh, your mom did country heat. I got to give a shout out to Diana. She's one of my newer coaches. She's awesome. Anybody have any more questions? No. Oh, oh calendar wise you take a week off between rounds um yes so the week off is our prep week um and i, I kind of keep the old group open you know to announce the winner of the, the monthly contest and um and just to get any like few loose ends cleaned up and then after i move everyone over but for example this month i'm going to wait two weeks because i'm doing a clean eating group next week and then I'm going to wait till after the long weekend. You always have to take that in consideration. Like if I think starting at the end of August when people plan to go away, like it, it kind of gets people down sometimes. They're like, well, I, I get a lot, a lot of that all the time. Oh, I, I can't do it. I'm away for the weekend. And of course, my veterans know it's a lifestyle. But the new people, it's, it's hard to start up over a long weekend like that. So um, any advice for a person who works night shift? Tell your group you work night shift. They'll understand. Um, I have uh, my friend across the street. She works night shift sometimes. So I'm assuming you probably get home at like 8, 9 in the morning. You probably sleep until noon or 1 o'clock. Um, so before you go to work at night, say, you know, do a check-in, do a post, do a live video. I'm off to work. I'll see you guys at 1 o'clock. It's okay. They'll understand. They're, you're, you're human and they will understand trust me I expect you to be perfect all the time i did that today okay alethea had one question as far as when someone becomes discount becomes active do they get removed um no so i keep all my disco coaches in my group um especially because they're not active but even my active coaches are still in my group right now they're just starting out um, I think I even stayed in your group, Mike, for a couple months after I started just to get a few ideas. Um, like my coach Diana is still in my group. Um, and I've told her too, if you're not comfortable running your own group, throw them in my group and we'll kind of do it together. And she, she already does. She could run the group quite honestly. Uh, do people want to buy CP? Want to be? I have never had someone buy a challenge pack and not want to be part of the group. Um, I have had people not be on Facebook, so they've kind of, um, I had a wife not be on Facebook, but she's like, I'll kind of follow through my husband's Facebook and they're family friends, so it was all gravy, but um, that more happens with the people that I get through the leads online. Like, I've sold challenge packs through my leads and then they kind of don't really want to be part of the group. And I don't know if it's because they had the initiative themselves to go onto Beachbody and do it themselves and they feel like they don't need a coach. But, um, but no, I don't, I don't ever, I mean, I'll throw them in there if they don't want to participate, they don't want to participate, but, um, I think we should at least give them the chance to see what's going on in the group. Right. But no, I've never, never had that happen. I think that's it. I just want to, in, just in case people are typing questions, quick comments, yeah. isn't it? So to do with this is for me from what I've seen with Rachel's this is outside of the group but her public profile on Facebook she's also done a bit of a mind shift as well where she's I've seen it anyway she started to think like a leader and started to think like a top coach uh, I like that and the live videos I think that combination of I'm I'm a leader, but I'm rural, um, is one of the things that attracts people to Rachel. So, um, yeah, I've just, as a kudos, I've, I've totally seen that. It seems like it's the last month or two 
in your in your daily flows. What's that? It was summit. <laughs> Mike, I was gonna say the same thing because I see it every day, right? I, I I'm I'm part of her group, so I see the posts and everything, and I was gonna say. She's not her, yeah. and she's not she's not teaching these women to lose weight. She's teaching them how to be confident, teaching them how to be open. She like you should see the change and some of the 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 posts these women they want to hear from her. They want to see from her, and when they get confident, when they start being more open, then they want to start coaching, and that's how her business is starting to grow. And, and you should just see the momentum that's happening. And, it, and exactly that, that Mike, she decided to be a leader and she just took it. Saying, and not that she wants, it's not that she's a good salesperson. People want to be part of her challenge group, right? They, they just, they, they gravitate to her. And, and it's, that, it's that mindset. Just be a leader, not a coach. And, right? Well, that's like... It's what I learned in Summit, too. And it was also in that video that Jamie posted yesterday. Um, it, it's okay to shine. It's okay to be this bright, vibrant color and be the best person you can be. People don't know our rankings. People don't know what diamond is and two-star and three-star diamonds. So if you start putting on Facebook, you're one of the top coaches in the entire company. Nobody knows the difference. You know, you really got to like put yourself out there. Um, I have been following Bonnie Anglin, and Amy Silverman religiously since summit. And I've been like, and they just, you know, we learned about power stance, right? You got to, you just, you have to make yourself not seem bigger than you really are, but as big as you really are. We all have really big personalities, right? And you got to let people know that you have these really big personalities and that's what they're going to get when they're in your challenge group. And John Paul's absolutely right. I had someone, I think she's on the call, Shannon. She's one of my new coaches. She went for a new job that like she was never gone for before and she just went for it. And she thanked me this morning for helping her get this new confidence. So I talk about it in my groups all the time. Half the time it's not even fitness related. I talk about mental health um, and, and, and tons of stuff, right? So, you know, today we talked about vision boards and, and asking for what you want um, and, and, and uh, that kind of stuff. It's not always fitness, right? You're, you're helping people create a new life and the best version of themselves. And it's not always fitness related. They just want more confidence or they, you know, they want a better job and that's going to, and it's all mental. You guys, you, you know, exercise is all mental, right? So you got to hit all those, you know, those cornerstones, not just the fitness cornerstone, but you got to help them along in all facets of their life. And not, uh, not caring what other people think can be very attractive. To yes. People. So probably hurdle is getting to that point where at some point you realize how powerful and freeing it is to actually not care because nobody else does but you. Oh, I was a huge people pleaser. Trust me, when I started this, there, there are still friends that hate what I do. They don't acknowledge what I do. They have never congratulated me. They have never even said a word about me losing 70 pounds, like nothing. And it used to bug me and I don't give a rat's ass anymore. <laughs> because they were not bringing anything to my life. So when you guys stop caring about what other people uh, say about you, like it is so freeing and you have to give that power to your challengers too. You got to let them know, like do not care what other, it's like that saying, like what other people think of you is none of your business, right? It doesn't affect you in any way. Well. Anyways, thanks for listening to me. Now that I have a team, I feel like I needed to practice. <laughs> It, Joe, honestly, it's everybody's issue. It's everybody. Well, not everybody, but it's most people's issue is, is the, especially because Facebook is, and that's, I think I, that's why I love what Rachel's done is she's taken it away from being a highlight reel and just being, it's her life real. It's not, she's not worried about putting perfection out there. Like a lot of us, myself included, worry about putting out there is attractive when people are real that's that's why people watch reality shows even though most of those are scripted but um, I sorry. offer up my children for adoption every day in my group <laughs> they know how crazy they are and I, every day I try to give them away but nobody will take them so if there are no more questions um, 
Jamie, I don't know if you're still uh, still on here or not, but um, I see a mouse moving. That's you, Rachel. Yeah. Okay. So uh, on that note, um, we'll close off the call. Thanks, Rachel, for doing that. That was Thank awesome. Um, hopefully people, again, it's recorded. If you want to watch it over again, I, I highly recommend it. Um, and again, the coolest part is no ads. Um, just, and the biggest thing is be consistent. You cannot post once a day about, about purely your kids are doing and expect people to follow you. Okay? You got to be real. You have to be consistent. Jamie, can you speak now? I stopped sharing, so you should be on screen. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, no, I think everything's been said. That was awesome, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks. I, I think the, the crazy part about this business is everyone's so worried about being a certain way where the whole secret of the business is just to be yourself, imperfections and all, because that's what people relate to, right? And, and, and it's, it's, it's so ironic because you're on Facebook for everyone to see. I get that in your, in your groups, it's a little more personal, but everyone's so worried about doing the wrong thing where in the actual fact is that's the, that's the secret sauce to the business is that's what people want because then you become completely relatable. I'm going to do a shout out to one of the new diamonds, Shauna. I, and I said this before, but you, you going on the monkey bars is still one of my favorite videos. She is watching from the beginning. She didn't edit it and just show herself going across. The first couple of times she took her, she could only make a couple runs. And it was real. Like it was so real. And that was the coolest part about it. And it, that made me want to watch each day and see how you were doing. It wasn't just, oh yeah, she, that was a clip. She edited it. She added music. She sped it up like Mike does. Um, it was, it was real and it was you. So though, for me, that's what I love. So congrats, Diamond, Shauna. Awesome. So we have, uh, what is it today? 18th, 19th, 18th, 18. So 12, 13 days left in team cup. Um, yeah, we've got about we've got about twenty teams. About ten of the chats are active. I'm not sure what's going on with the rest, but I can't. You know, no one else can force people to interact with each other but you. So, um, you got twelve days left. Like, let's let's not have any SC fours. Let's go for it this month and get team cup results. And at the end of the day, you hitting success club five or ten is really building your business. And if you want a bigger scale on your term. Top 10 is a pretty cool thing to call ourselves. So um, keep doing the dailies, guys. I've got some stuff I want to post tomorrow about daily activities and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we're uh, – <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever sit and think about it. I sure do. But, like, the fact – and I'm, we're not just saying the fact that – the fact that you guys are literally growing this team maybe faster than any other team is pretty – it's kind of crazy, right? And that's all on you guys. So be really proud of what you're doing. I sure hope you can hear me. <laughs> you're all good. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Go press unpause or go watch the 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 race now and see. Uh, don't say anything, and we'll see how Degrass did. Okay. See who's going to be last off.